Hello guys, in this video I'd like to show you how we can use Flask Jinja template renderer within the JavaScript. And you might wonder that it's not possible, but I just want to show you that it is absolutely possible and can be used in your web application. So let's create, let's quickly draft a web application, Flask app. So I say from Flask import Flask and create an app instance saying Flask name and create a route here app dot route uh, def root return can also import from flask render template string just to qu to quickly draft our template without creating a template folders folder like that and also create a quick app driver saying if name equals domain app.run and debug equals to true to enable uh, to enable our uh, our server uh, to enable the debug mode and now let's actually run our server by typing python3 app.py so by default the flask uh, server starts at port number 5000 so let's go there in the browser and update our page nothing here but because we didn't really return anything yet so just return some string we get it but we don't actually need a string instead we want to uh, render a template so i'll create a template variable uh, which would be the type of plain string here so uh, let's draft one but basically oh okay let's just have the very uh the very title so let's say flask app mm. return uh, return render template string and the template itself Save and update. Okay, and now let's create a variable. Oh, that that it would be equal to say hello, whatever. Or maybe let's let it be equal to true. Doesn't matter. And let's also embed this variable into. Mm, uh, let's pass this variable as the parameter to the render template string function. And also, if you're using render tablet, that this works absolutely the same. So the first var is the name of the uh, inner templates variable which so we can use the reference this variable by this name and the second var is this particular variable we are sending to the template so uh, actually uh, if here we specify a variable it has to print true okay so just change this to whatever it's been printed so uh let's actually create uh another variable called value well, let's let assign a number of 10 there and also provide this val equals to well and now we can uh so you're probably familiar with this sort of opportunity when we can uh say simply if var, e var equals to true and if Then uh, we want to print our our value basically, and also saying uh, else uh, let's call it back condition. So as far as our variable equals to true, we have to see this uh, value of 10. So let's quickly check that out. Okay, we get we got our 10. So in, if now we just uh, make it false, then we have a bad condition because uh, it has been evaluated as false. But uh, quite quite pretty fun thing regarding Flask that this sort of constant can be also used within the JavaScript. So let me quickly demonstrate you that. So 
So just quickly create a script tag here with type equals to text and JavaScript and close the script tag. So if I just say uh, the first thing, I can alert uh, the Flask variable itself. So say val here and uh, this var and this val over here. So it's supposed to have two values. The, the var is false and the val is 10. So that's kind of it. And also we can use absolutely the same construct as above here. So we can simply say, uh, so in this case, we want to alert our value like this, and in this uh, in this case, we can alert uh, our back condition. So let's quickly check that out. Okay, back condition. So that's because the var is equal to, is equal to false. False. But if we just keep it uh, back to true, well, in this case, we get our value in, in the val variable. So this is it, guys. Uh, well, uh, I'll be really happy if you didn't know that Jinjin Applet Renderer uh, can be used within the JavaScript as well as within the HTML. So I hope you learned something interesting from this video and see you next time and take care.